For those that found themselves in Vault 11 after the Great War, life would have been good. That is until the Overseer announced the rules of the Vault. Every year, one person inside would have to be sacrificed in order to appease the mainframe. Otherwise, all would perish in an instant. This initial announcement was met with huge uproar, and all citizens of the Vault banded together and voted for the Overseer to be used as the first sacrifice. He resisted at first, but the residents were able to guess his password to his computer, controlling the death chamber as his wife's name, and he was sentenced to death. He walked his way down a short hallway, and was met with a small room that held nothing but a projector and a single seat, and it was here he met his final demise. After this incident, it was decided that each year a new overseer for the vault would be voted in by all residents, and later sacrificed to appease the mainframe. But this resulted in many of the vault dwellers banding together and creating blocks. That way they could team up and decide who would be chosen next. Every year, particularly hated individuals from each block would give speeches on why they should not be chosen as the next overseer, with many using their loving families and children as a way to guilt others into not choosing them. The strongest of these groups was referred to as the Justice Block. And in one year, a man named Nathan from a separate block had beaten many of the Justice Block members in poker, which very much angered them. And because of the power they held in the vault, it became apparent that Nathan was most likely going to be voted as the next overseer and die. In order to save her husband, Nathan's wife Catherine decided to meet with the Justice Block and ask for forgiveness. But they told her the only way they would forgive is if they were all to have their way with her. And so they did for months on end until it eventually became clear that even after Catherine's sacrifice, Nathan was still going to be voted as the next overseer. In retaliation, Catherine went on a murdering spree of multiple members of the Justice Block, and because of this was swiftly voted by all vault dwellers as the next overseer. Now with complete control of the vault, Catherine decided to change the rules of the simulation, instead opting to choose a random person each year to death to appease the mainframe, rather than leaving it to a vote. The Justice Block began to go into turmoil over the idea they may lose power, with some members arguing they just needed to wait until one of the members got the Overseer job to change the rules, but it was too late, and a brawl broke out between the Justice League and other Vault Dwellers. Now with the majority of the citizens left dead, the remaining members vowed to never again sacrifice anyone to the mainframe, and instead all band together and die as one. But when the time finally came that the next sacrifice had to happen, the mainframe simply congratulated the survivors on using human decency and finally solving the puzzle of the vault. The mainframe opened the door to the vault and wished the dwellers the best of luck. Pure guilt and dismay overcame the remaining survivors, and they all decided to create a death pact where they all killed one another, except for one survivor, who walked out of the vault knowing every detail of the horrors that had transpired. To this day, we still do not know who that lone survivor is. Some speculate it is No Bark from Fallout New Vegas, but we will never know, and that one person may have some of the most twisted trauma in the entire series. Fallout 4 players know just how annoying the gunners and their entire faction can be at times, routinely attacking your settlements and being more of a nuisance than anything. One of the most strange things about them though is we actually have no idea where they stem from. They just kind of are here. One theory postulates, though, that the Gunners may in fact be remnants of the famous Vault 75, located under Molden Middle School. Set up specifically for children, the Vault was supposed to be a place to protect and preserve the youth, but in classic Vault Tech fashion, it was being used for a much more nefarious purpose. The children inside were being experimented on endlessly, and the scientists in the Vault would destroy any child that did not perform at the utmost highest levels on each test of strength dexterity, and intellect. This eventually resulted in an army of super soldier children that retaliated against the scientists and escaped the vault, never to be seen again. But could the militaristic and strong gunner faction actually be these children now all grown up?